We are at Happy Pappy's Diner in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I love breakfast food. I'll eat it every meal, every single day. <laughs> I mean, I can, it always sounds a little cocky, but you know, high quality for sure. I mean, I have really exacting standards, so you know, I don't let anything leave my shop unless I truly 100% believe in it. Um, there's always going to be, you know, some character, some very uh, natural flaws in some of the work, but everything is going to be to an extremely high standard. I'm Chris Giffro with Cowdog Craftworks. I am a woodworker specializing in hand tool woodworking and we are in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I grew up in Davie, which is a little suburb outside of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, it's just down the road from here. But yeah, that's where I grew up, born and raised. I uh, lived in California for about five years where I went to law school and moved back in 20... 2013, 2012, 2013, right around there. Yeah. My mom lives uh, in the same house that I grew up in just down the way. And uh, she is pretty much, you know, my anchor here in uh, South Florida. Hot and humid, but uh, we have a very heavy uh, Hispanic culture here, Caribbean. It's definitely the definition of a melting pot for sure. Yeah. So when I bought my house, it was a foreclosure in 2016 and I needed to outfit my house basically with furniture and I had sort of blown through all my money <laughs> as I was uh, doing the remodel. I had a bunch of tools laying around and a buddy of mine had turned me on to YouTube and was just like, hey, you know, like if you need to make a dining table, it's a super easy way to make it. So next thing I know, I'm starting to outfit my whole house with uh, furniture that I was making. One of my favorite things is working with vintage hand tools. And I like the idea of being able to not only make things the way that they were made, say, you know, 100, 200 years ago, but to use a tool from a craftsman that was previously used, like, you know, like I said, 150, 200 years ago, and to have that history, like, in my hands that I'm being able to apply to something I'm making today. Uh, Japanese carpentry, there's this concept of take the line, leave the line, or split the line. So in a joint like this, literally every time I have to make a cut, I have to make that decision as to how I'm gonna handle the line in order to make sure that the fit is gonna be exactly as snug or as loose as I want it. It's been interesting to say the least. It's, it's been challenging, you know, like that's probably the best way to really describe it. Um, I started as most folks do in this space where you're very DIY centric. You know, a lot of stuff is just held together with, you know, glue and fasteners. Um, and then I found a love for slowing down that process and hand tool woodworking, I would say about two to three years ago. And that's when I really dedicated to um, applying that into my workflow. I've noticed, at least for me, is that because it slows down the process, it allows me to be more precise and more exact and more careful. Whereas when I was primarily using power tools for the most part, I was a little more callous and kind of making a lot more mistakes. So just having that slower, more calm experience um, allows me to be more precise. So I'm a realist and sometimes power tools are necessary and you have to incorporate them into your workflow. And in a situation like this where there's a bulk of waste that I want to hang out or hog out rather, um, certainly not going to be uh, using a palm brace to do it. <laughs> right now um, I'm making a lot of projects for me. I've sort of slowed down on commission work and all that. Um, I'm trying to you know grow a YouTube channel as well so I'm really just doing projects for myself. Uh, previously though I've done a lot of commercial spaces and some of that actually doesn't involve a lot of hand tool woodworking. I just recently outfitted a shipping container. I've done some built-ins. Um, I've also done, you know, just some desk dining tables for folks. Um, so it's really a grab bag as to like who I'm working with and what I'm doing. We are at Buddha Pants in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, Buddha Pants is a yoga pants company. They make uh, harem pants. So the MC Hammer Pants that you're probably most familiar with. And this is a shipping container, lounge, and office space that I retrofitted for them.
My favorite project is actually my workbench, to be quite honest. Like that was a, you know, it's my first start to finish hand tool uh, workbench. It's an 18th century carpenter's bench, uh, the Nicholson workbench. Um, I, that's one of those things where when I finished it, I was incredibly proud of it. Just, and it's something I get to use almost every single day in the shop. So, you know, it's not something that um, just sits there and looks pretty. It's pretty and it's functional. And I also like the ability to abuse it a bit. And um, it's just fun, man. It's a, it's, it was a really cool and challenging project. And it's one of those where there were struggles along the way, but at the end of the day, I was just absolutely in love with the way it turned out. So by day, I am an attorney. I work for the state and we advocate for children that are in foster care. Brown building here on the left is my office building. So typically, it's either gonna be super early in the morning, like before I have to get into my uh, workday routine, or it'll be literally like first thing when I get home, after I take care of the dogs kind of thing. Uh, weekends, weekends, they're pretty jammed up usually. I work almost exclusively out of a one-car garage. And that one-car garage is quite small. It's an old converted carport. And it also houses my uh, washer and dryer. <laughs> so, you know, like, I have to maximize my uh, space efficiency, really, and try to get the most out of that. So a lot of things are on wheels. My workbench is also the outfeed table for my table saw. Um, I designed my workbench in such a way that I can work effectively on both sides, whereas uh, typical, you know, like a Rubo workbench that you see in somebody's shop is a lot of times butted up to a wall. Um, I don't have those luxuries. And honestly, that's actually one of the reasons why I also appreciate hand tools too, because the footprint on my tools is not huge. Like I don't have a big standing bandsaw, um, a drum sander, those kind of things. I have basically my walls as my storage space for all my equipment, so. Well, like, I guess what I could say is that, you know, like my dad was like a big inspiration for a lot of this. So like my dad was not a woodworker, but he was always a handy guy. And I remember like, as I was getting into, you know, woodworking, you know, it was towards like sort of the back end of my dad's life. And I was always like doing stuff and like trying to like show off to him a bit and kind of being like, hey, like check out this cool thing I made. And you know, like I noticed that like he thought it was neat. Like he was pretty impressed and like that brought a lot of happiness to me. Um, and then, you know, even after he passed, like woodworking was kind of like my therapy, you know, like that's what I really immersed myself in just day in and day out just to try to, you know, process everything. So I mean, when I think about woodworking, like I always think about my dad, even though he wasn't a woodworker. So yeah, this guy uh, on Instagram just messaged me and he made my shaker desk. And that's the first time anybody's actually like said that they've made one of my projects before. So it's pretty cool. I'm pretty excited about it. I have an incredible like support network of friends and family here. You know, one of my best friends, PJ Fetcher, uh, who I grew up with, he lives right down the road. He's a great um, support for woodworking and just a great friend in general. <laughs> These tables are live edge slab tables done uh, between myself and PJ Fetcher. And this is one of the first collaborations that we ever did together. Obviously my fiance, Lindsay. So Lindsay's a huge support for me in um, helping me uh, pursue woodworking, pursue you know my goals and my dreams. And she really empowers me to do um, anything I want as far as woodworking is concerned and being a part of this community, um, pushing myself on YouTube. Um, she is, she's amazing, she's everything. I like to really push myself to be uncomfortable. 
and try new and different things. So I'm constantly experimenting, I'm constantly doing things that are way outside of my comfort zone. So it's really hard to say where that's gonna end up, but I would like to get to a point where, you know, perhaps I can start teaching some one-on-one -on -one classes, things like that, getting other folks involved in the craft. So that's something I would enjoy, but I don't think there's really an end goal in sight necessarily. I don't see, um, I guess, a finish line, you know, like it's just something that's always gonna be evolving as I evolve. like a woodworking superhero.